Whoa, switch it up a little bit. What happened here? Um, what is going on? It is Divine Deck. I'll figure out why Mike's name is uh, my name and my name is Mike's name. But guys, what's good? It's Divine Deck. It is Monday, March 18th. Big day. Big day. Big week, honestly. Humongous week. We got a lot of things cooking, baby. Guys, Blake Snell to the San Francisco Giants. We're going to touch on that. But more importantly, we don't need to talk about other teams. This is a San Diego Padres show. We are San Diego Padres fans. And we are 30 hours away from the DSG pregame stream and 31 hours away from our San Diego Padres playing their first game of the 2024 Major League Baseball season. Mies, how are you? What's up, brother? I'm doing fantastic. Um, dude, listen, I mean, yesterday got my juices flowing. I'm not going to lie. Went out on Saturday night, tried to stay up for the game at 3 a.m. I got back around 1 um, didn't wake up till 11. So didn't really work for me. Uh, excited for tomorrow. I mean, I, I think the thing that it's Wednesday morning, I've been tripping over it a little bit. I started to finally pick up on the fact that that's tomorrow night. It's crazy. So it's tomorrow night. It's not anytime else. Thank you, it's tomorrow night. Yeah. Thank you, Borna, for that. Um, it's exciting though, man. I mean, I can't believe it. It's here. Um, it's been a, it's been a slow off season in a, in a sense, but we just got C Snell signed today to a different squad. Things are picking up a little bit and tomorrow we get the first taste of 2024 Padres baseball. I cannot wait to watch the boys play out there in South Korea. Uh, Tyler glass now versus the one and only you Darvish. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that you or is that Joe? You Darvish, who is also. A fan of the gospel, baby. You Darvish. Fan of the gospel. Tuned. Hey, you might have bigger things to do in South Korea than tune in, but if you are tuning in, you, what's going on? He followed us on Instagram. Does that mean he's going to win the NL Cy Young Award this year? Yes. yes. That is exactly what it means. <laughs> guys, I'm so happy everybody's here. Make sure to comment where you guys are tuning in from. We love you all. We love baseball. We love the pods. Guys. We made and, it. and Matt, I, I, I do want to, I do want to jump in. Joey asked, I thought it was Wednesday. Joey, it is Wednesday morning. So for us kind of, it's, it's in between Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. So Wednesday morning at 3 AM, um, you know, we're going to be some early risers. I'm excited. I think, I think Matt, something that we can talk about is how passionate you have to be as a fan to be up at 3 AM watching That's that crazy. game. It's crazy. Like, how, yeah. what, what do you think the discrepancy of team, like how many fans of each team are going to be up percentage-wise? Percentage of Padres fans, percentage of Dodgers fans. What are we looking at? I'm saying 15. I'm saying 15 from each side, and that's yeah. core diehard fans. Yeah, dude, you're a real sicko if you're waking up at 3 in the morning on a weeknight to watch your team. But guess what? That's what we are. Yeah. Hey, cough, cough, motherfucker. I'm a real sicko. <laughs> Hey, I'm a sicko for the pods. Everybody in this chat's a sicko for the pods. I'm fired up, bro. I'm absolutely fired up. We spent all off season, all we've heard all off season. Oh, the Padres, 2023, Sleepy Bob couldn't lead us there. Soto, but all this bullshit. Hey, all that noise, 2023 is officially over tomorrow night. None of that shit matters anymore. We leave it all in the past. Brand new slate. That's why baseball is the best sport in the world. Brand new slate. I don't give a fuck about last year. I don't give a fuck about 2022. It's all about 2024. And guess what? Our team's good. Our team is very, very good. And you know what? I was watching these games, these little, uh, you know, when we were playing the Korea teams, who also, guess what? These are real ba – ha Sung Kim was on one of those teams. These are real baseball players. Just because, you know, oh, wow, the Padres didn't blow them out by 50 runs, it, people – what do you guys expect? These are professional baseball players. They're in a professional, it's a professional league. They're not, they're not facing the Matt and Mike Devine slow pitch softball fraternity league team from 2018. No, they're playing real baseball players. And thank God they won. So we didn't get trolled. But guess what, guys? The pods look good, baby. And we got the world watching. Whoever wakes up watching tomorrow night, we made it. We made it through the offseason, Mike, honestly. I want to say congratulations to every single person in the chat. You made it You made it through the offseason. The offseason of baseball sucks. It sucks. Having baseball in our lives is the best thing in the world. Baseball is the best sport in the world. I say it all the time. I truly believe it. There's so many things that happen in baseball games 
that, you know, you got 162 shots, right? If you're a real fan, you can watch so much, man. 162, three hours each. Your whole life is baseball, bro. We just eat that shit up. We have a great team in San Diego, a great fan base, so many fun players to watch. And one of those fun players has his homecoming. And what did he do in his homecoming, Mike? He had two home runs. Um, ha Sung Kim. Ha Sung Kim, the Korean king, returns to Seoul and gets the first hit in the first game. And then yesterday, absolutely dicks two fastballs. And that just souvenir Ha Sung, bro. That dude looks absolutely dialed in to start the season, man. He gained 10, 15 pounds of muscle in the offseason. The one thing about Kimmy, and I say this all the time, and the reason why I'll always love Ha Sung Kim, he shows up to the MLB. And if you've watched those last two games or watched any of the Dodgers games against the Korean teams, those guys do not throw hard. They throw 91 at tops, right? 92. So Korean King Ha Sung Kim comes to the United States. It takes him a little while to adjust to the plate. What does he do every offseason? Gets better, man. I wouldn't be surprised if Ha Sung Kim hits 25 to 30 home runs this year, plays gold glove defense at shortstop, and hits 280, which is objectively one of the best players in baseball. It wouldn't be surprising. And anyone who's been paying attention completely agrees. Mike, what is your take on Haas Swole Kim, as my guy Iron Swan says? Uh, you know, my take is is we just got to extend him. I, I – can fathom and tolerate Blake Snell pitching for another team. I don't think I could watch Hassan Kim don another uniform um, in his career during his baseball career, at least in the States. Uh, that just would crush me. There's no one else outside of maybe Tatis, Manny, excluding prospects that I would want to see remain a Padre for the rest of their career more then ha Sung Kim. Yeah, it's Tatis um, is number one, and ha Sung Kim right now is number two. I'd say Machado's number two for me. Um, but I'm about well, to Well, he's see, going to be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. It's like with Manny, we know he's going to be in it. And when he does leave, that means he's – I I don't see him being, you know, this 40-year-old guy that's – we're really missing him on his little swang song. Um, the thing with ha Sung Kim, it's nervous, is, you know, hey – He's going, I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, if he stays healthy, he is going to play himself into a fat contract. And I think he loves SD. SD loves him. And I wouldn't be surprised if he gets extended. And I understand why people are a little hesitant on the extension, Mike. And I think people look at the Cronenworth extension from last year and they look at it and they see, is it is it smart to extend a, another guy? Because what happens if we extend Ha Sung Kim is... Ha Sung Kim, Manny Machado, Xander Bogarts, Fernando Tatis Jr. You got Kim. A lot of the positions are filled with guys on long contracts. Crone, that's majority of your infield and outfield are filled. Position players are filled already for the next seven years. That doesn't bring a lot of positional flexibility. So I kind of understand where some fans are at. I want to see people in the um in the chat. How excited would you be excited if Ha Sung Kim? Signed a five-year, $110 million extension before the season starts in America. Would you be excited, Mike? Yeah. I mean, I think that would that would just be the cherry on top of the offseason. Um, every single year, ha Sung Kim has improved. Every single year. And I don't think that's going to stop. He's 28. He hasn't even technically entered his baseball prime yet when you look at, like, the career arc of most players. Um we would like be fit. idiotic. We we also we also have to remember he f f not trying to curse. Sorry for cussing. Uh, he <laughs> hates he he loves San Diego and the Padres and the organization and his teammates. Loves playing playing with Profar. Loves playing with Tatis. Loves playing with Manny. He wants to be a Padre. If the price is right, he will stay with the Padres. I don't Barker. think he has – he doesn't have an agent like Boris who's just going to be like, you have to hit the open market. And we're going to try to get you as much money as you can. Hassan Kim is going to get paid. He is going to get paid. And I think the Padres are going to pay Hassan Kim. He is a stud baseball player. And I think we talked about this in the last episode, Matt. The only reason a guy – like Jackson Merrill, who comes up as your main shortstop prospect, and a guy like Xander Bogarts gets moved to second base, is if you expect to keep 
Ha Sung Kim as your shortstop of the future. It would not make any sense in the other way to look at it that Xander Bogarts moves off so- shortstop. Yeah. Jackson Merrill moves from shortstop to the outfield. Jesper Ha Sung Kim to play one final season at shortstop with the Padres. And then you have to reignite one of him, Tatis, Bogarts, Merrill. We have so many former shortstops on this team. And ha Kim's the guy that's actually playing. The only reason that they would do that is because they think ha Kim's going to stay. The price is right. ha Kim stays. Will they pay him? This is a – you know, Matt, actually, I think this is a, a good way to look at it. This is the first big test of ownership outside of Peter Seidler's legacy to see if they extend ha Kim and keep him as a Padre. That will show us if we are willing to continue to spend with the market or if we are going to go back in time – and be a much cheaper squad and not spend the money that we should be spending on players. Because Hassan Kim wants to be a Padre. Peter Seidler would extend Hassan Kim. Is the Seidler company and cut spenda going to cut spending? Or is he going to spend a on Hassan Kim? We're waiting to see that. I don't know. I think Kim, other than Tatis, and I know this sounds crazy, I think Kim might be the face of the Padres internationally other than Tatis. I don't think that's crazy to say. Over Manny? Yeah. Hassan Kim's a global superstar, man. You see these people in South Korea, bro? He's like New Elvis Balance out sponsorship. there. He's New like Balance Elvis, bro. He's, he's Dude, cooking. He is. I mean, bro, he's got the swagger. He's in his prime. He plays hard. I would be sick to my stomach if I saw him on another team, especially the Giants. We're going to talk touch on Blake Snell right now. But Scott Boris isn't his agent. Thank God for Hassan Kim. Scott Boris had a stinker of an offseason, brother. Stinker. Cody Bellinger was expected to get 160 mil. Blake Snell supposedly turned down 150 mil from the Yankees. And now he's pitching for pretty much a one-year deal with the Giants. Obviously, a lot of money for our guy, Blake. And if you guys don't know, me and Mike both live in San Francisco. So if we do see Blake Snell out, we will be dapping him up. That's our guy. Congratulations, Blake. But Blake Snell going to another team, that's fine, man. You know, Blake Snell was a Ray before he came to the Padres. People don't want to admit this, but Blake for the first couple of years was, was good for us. He wasn't great. Last year, he was great. So it's not like we're losing this guy that for three years was like the guy, right? Like, oh, I'd consider who, this is a good question for the chat. Over the last three years, which pitcher do you think has been the best for the San Diego Padres? Joe Musgrove, you Darvish, or Blake Snell? Uh, I, I'd go, I'd go, Joe Musgrove, Blake Snell, you Darvish. That's probably true. what I was gonna say. Too. I mean, you, I, I mean, I think if you take out last year, it's obviously Blake and Joe, or no, you and Joe. But you, you almost have to say that Blake is the number one. He won a Cy Young, like he won the best pitcher in baseball award. It's hard to not say that he's number one. He had the only Cy Young that we've seen since Jake Peavy. So that's pretty impressive. That's a long time. That's almost two decades. So I don't know. Yeah, man. I mean, the Cy Young was huge. And and Blake Snell's last year was probably the most dominant I've seen a San Diego Padres pitcher since, you know, Jake Peavy. He was absolutely insane. Um, is it crazy for me to say, though, Blake Snell for $31 million or Dylan Cease and Michael King for – $13 million without a doubt. And I love Blake to death. Anyone who thinks that they'd rather have Blake for 31 than those two dudes for 13 is out of their mind. I love Blake. I think he's going to be solid for the Giants. Do I think he's going to repeat what he did last year? No, I honestly don't. He had a fantastic defense in San Diego. He walked a shit ton of dudes. He's an absolute beast and he gets out of jams. But is he a $31 million pitcher? A year, in your opinion, Mike? Because I, I, I would have loved him to get I a think, longer contract. Because I don't know if he's going to replicate what he got. I, I'm, I'm nervous, man. I'm nervous for Blake. I, I, I mean, I, listen, as nervous as you could be for a guy that just made sixty-two million dollars. Yeah, I don't think like he's someone that we should have spent thirty-one million a year on. That being said, I'm very happy for him that he got it. I think there's I there's a common there's a common argument so far since this news dropped that. You know, do we boo him? Do we do this? Do we do that? Like, no, 
No, he got the most money that he was going to get from any of the teams. He made a decision. I don't think he – he's never said one bad thing about the Padres. He's never said anything bad. He's a huge – he still supports every single player on the team. He just happened to get the most money from a team that's in our division. I think – I don't take the Giants seriously, to be honest. I don't think they're a serious team. I agree. Um, I I mean, obviously, they had a dynasty in the mid-2010s. But right now, their team doesn't move me at all. I don't really give a I don't care about their team. Robbie Is Ray, he- fraud. Listen, they they have two guys that are super volatile pitching, Robbie Ray and Blake Snell. They got Logan Webb, who is good. They got Kyle Harrison, who's could be really good. Um their offense sucks. Their offense sucks in my opinion. I don't they don't strike me, they don't strike fear in me as a team. The only team I take serious in our division to be completely honest is the Dodgers. I don't think the D-backs are good. I, I'm I'm in a minority too. People think the D-backs are going to be this team. They won 83 games and made a run in the playoffs. They they're not good. They're not a good team. Now you're who they had? Who they had? They added Eduardo Rodriguez, Jock Peterson, don't care. Uni, don't Uni, care. Uni, Uni, Eugenio Suarez. Again, don't care. Those are three guys that don't move the needle. <laughs> <laughs> they're the three guys that don't move the needle, and they lost a couple guys. I, I don't know. I, they, 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 these teams don't fear. I don't fear them. I do fear the Dodgers. I'll be completely honest. Yeah, they're, they're a scary good. fucking team. They're, good. they're a scary they're team. Good. They're good. They're very they're good. Gonna, we'll touch on that game in a little bit, too. Last thing on the Giants. I got two things, actually. One, and I know this is like, why are we talking about this? But it, it's it's something that I actually truly believe. They did win three World Series in that, you know, 2010 to 2014. But are they – the thing with baseball is – was that really a dynasty? Were they ever like, holy shit, like – that's the oh the giants are coming to town man like oh i'm nervous like i never was scared about that team like i know they won and they got hot but a couple i think two of those years they were wild card teams and they made it like it's easy to not be scared when we weren't even sniffing the playoffs (laughs) brother we didn't have to be scared because we weren't even fucking winning 60 games we were horrible we had like jesus sanchez hitting third he was kind of nice he was nice for a little bit but like that that was like (laughs) That was our three hitter during the 2014 season. I'm pretty sure when they won a World Series at the 2012 season, like we were an unserious organization. But my, so we I, didn't have to fear them. I agree with you, man. I think people are overhyping the shit out of the D-backs. I think people are overhyping the Giants. I think the Giants are going to be good. They're going to be better than they were last year. But I don't, I don't know, bro. I there's something about this Padres team, and we're homers. We say it all the time. We're as big of homers as they get. But just seeing how they've interacted in South Korea so far. I'm seeing Tatis posting Instagram stories. The entire team's out getting Korean barbecue. You got Pro Far back, who's the most beloved Padre, at least by the players, maybe ever. Every single person loves that guy. There's just some energy that's going on. They seem way looser than they were last year, man. Like, it doesn't seem Manny smiling on the bench. Everybody's happy. Everybody's kicking it, bro. They're like, yo, like, I don't know. That's a team I remember rooting for in, you know, 2022, 2021. Good vibes, bro. The VAR on this team last year, I don't know if it was Soto. I don't know if it was Sleepy Bob. I don't know if it was Austin Nola. I don't know who's the culprit. But something was off with the vibe last year. And this year, the vibe's back. And when the vibe's vibe back, back, when the vibe's back, Mike, anything's possible. And you know what we got? We got the biggest task ahead. And it's two games against the L.A. Dodgers. L.A. Dodgers are good, man. We've said it. We're haters. We A lot of the time, we hate for engagement, to be completely honest. But we are haters of the L.A. Dodgers. A lot of friends that are Dodgers fans, but we don't like the team. We don't like the overall fan base as well. We like our friends, but we don't like the fan base. Dodgers are a great team. On paper, which is like their thing, they're, they're incredible. But... You still got to play the games. It's not MLB. You're not simming an MLB season, right? Hey, you Darvish on the bump tomorrow. First game of the season in South Korea. Facing Mookie, Freddie, Shohei, Teoscar. Just stacked. I couldn't be more excited slash confident in you Darvish. Something about you this offseason. Maybe it's because he followed the Divine Sports Gospel. But something about you seems like he's ready to cook. I don't think he was healthy at all last year. When you Darvish is healthy, he's a great pitcher. He's a fantastic pitcher when he's healthy. He's had some injuries. Every time he's hurt, he's a little sketch. I won't lie. But when he's healthy, you Darvish is still that guy. You start 
Yeah. You put you in that game. Hey, you Darvish, give me five. Give me five innings tomorrow. That's all I need. Five innings, one to two runs. You got Jackson Merrill batting ninth. He's going to hit a double off fucking Glass now. Glass now is good. Glass now is good. He's got good hair. I need, to, I need to figure out what conditioning he uses. He's very good hair. But he's not great. He's not great. This is the thing. There's only so many great, great players. Shohei Otani, he's great, right? When he comes up, you have to actually be scared. Tyler Glass now mm-hmm. can easily give up four and four earned, five earned tomorrow. He could also shove. But guys, that's why baseball is the best. These juggernaut teams. Look at the fucking Padres versus the KBO team. Those motherfuckers, Wu Suck Go, almost gave up the game. These KBO yeah. teams almost beat Manny Machado and Tatis. That's what baseball is all about, baby. And we got them tomorrow. We're going to, you know, take your nap. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask real quick. How are you preparing? Are you going to take a nap before? What, what, what's your vibe? And I want to see people in the chat as well. Uh, I don't know, man. It's a, it's a, it's been a tough debate for me so far. I'm debating. Well, we're doing the pregame show, everyone. So I, I want, I want to mention that prior to giving my take. But 2 a.m. We're starting to stream. Me and Matt, um, we're gonna be live, and and it's just, it's gonna be. A It'll blast. be on our so YouTube as well. And then Hog is gonna, gonna do a, Hog's gonna do a stream uh, with uh, our boy Glick as well. That'll be like a game stream. But if you want to check out our YouTube um, account slash what we're gonna be doing the pregame show on via YouTube, uh, go to look in the bio right now. Just hit us with a subscribe. It's also gonna be on Twitter. But if you want to comment um check it out we'll be live starting at 2 a.m it's gonna be crazy bro it's gonna be crazy uh yeah. i'm honestly super so, yeah mean, if you I got mean, school for... if you got work hey this is the thing guys I'm, I'm telling you right now this is the thing how many times are the padres going to be playing at three in the morning in a meaningful game against our bitter rival in south korea i know you might have school i know you might have work guess what coffee's a thing Wake up, hey, battle through, two nights. Two nights, battle through, you know, crank out those cold calls, crank out, you know, those Excel spreadsheets, crank out whatever work you have to do. You got to watch the game. You're going to look back on your deathbed one day, hopefully way down the road, and you're going to be like, God damn, bro, I cannot believe I missed that Fernando Tatis Jr. walk-off in South Korea off of Evan Phillips because I wanted to wake up because I had, you know, math 101. No one yeah. cares about math. Guess what? All you need is your degree. All you need is your degree. It doesn't matter what grade you get. All you need is your degree. I need every single one of you Padres fans watching that game. If it's just me and him, I'm we're not going to win. We need the whole we need the whole fan base, baby. We need the whole Yeah, the Keurig, hey. The Keurig, the espresso, the Nespresso, give it to me all. Monster Energy, Celsius, Prime, anything you drink, baby. I need every single person watching. Please, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, this is a premier sports week, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Padres, Dodgers, Seal Series, Soul Series. Uh, then you go right into March Madness. I, I I might just stay up the whole time. I might just stay up nonstop for about six days, just let it ride. Um, I'm juiced. I think for hallucinating me, after the sixth I, day, I, dude. I, it's sixth inning, bro. I'm gonna be sitting there like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> what, is that Randy? Is that Randy Jones? God forbid, Mike. <laughs> Is there any way you fall asleep tomorrow? If we're up or down by a lot, do you fall asleep? Or are you staying up even okay. if we're down? And this, if I want to, I want to hey, chat, chat. I want to ask you guys as well. Let's say, God forbid, tomorrow, you know, our boy you doesn't have it, and we're down five nothing in the second. Do you go to bed? We're yeah. not. We're not. But I want to see the chat. Would you go to bed for that? Because I'm, I'm, I'm interested to hear. Hell no. Nah. No, nah, dude, I'm not going to bed. I'm not going to bed for that. If if we're down like eight one in the seventh, I'll probably be like, shit, it's four thirty a.m. I might need to hit a snoozer. Um, but I, I I'm not sleeping if it's a close. If we're eight one. If we're up eight one though, oh dude, if, if we're, we're up eight one. Eight one no, nah, I can't sleep because you know why? Because if if I go to sleep and then we lose nine eight, I'm gonna believe it was my fault. That's the issue. I'm gonna think it was my fault that we lost. If we blow a seven run lead because I fell asleep, that's just the way it works. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be frustrated. Yeah. This is a great take, Adrian. Uh, I'm going to be pissed. Yeah. If I stay yeah, up I'll and they get absolutely too. dick slapped, I'm they going to be win. furious. They got to win. They, they got to win. Hey, my message to the San Diego Padres. You got to take at least one. 
you got to take at least one in Korea. We got Fan Fest on Sunday. The real season, not the real season, but the you know United States season starts uh, against the Giants. We might be facing our old friend Blake Snell and Sleepy Bob. We can't start the season 0 2. I think we win tomorrow. I think tomorrow's the game we win. And maybe we win two. I think we win at least one, though, bro. This team. And Mike, we're going to touch on this guy a little bit. Jackson Merrill. We talk about him all the time. But his ABs, man, how this guy swings. He looks like he's ready to rock. I know it was Korean pitching. I know they don't throw that fast. But could you be more confident in having him play center field tomorrow? No. He's dude, he's he's hyped me up every single time. He's uh, in my opinion right now, he's our best offensive player. Maybe outside of Kimmy so far this this uh this spring. But dude, he just hits. I like guys that just pause. I like guys that just hit. Like just hit. Like honestly, just all sides of the field. Dude just just hits. He hits for average. It's a lost art in baseball, to be completely honest. Like, I feel like everyone's trying to hit home runs. This guy just hits the ball where it's going. And if we have a guy like that that just consistently gets on base, consistently hits singles, consistently, you know, hits a ball in the gap, instead of – he's, a he's in my opinion – and this is a hot take. I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah. He's, he's going to be batting ninth to start the season. I would not be surprised if he's in the top half of the lineup by May. No, nah, I'm not surprised either. It kind of reminds me a little bit of um, kind of reminds me a little bit of Tati starting. You know, when we went to his first game against the Giants in 2019, and he batted seventh, and he got that infield single. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Merrill is. Yeah, definitely. I can see him more batting sixth than fifth, maybe. But um, he's legit, man. He's legit. And you know who else is legit? And I want to, I want to start. I won't even say start because there's so many fans that are also in agreement on this. Grand Pauly needs to at least be on the, you know, opening day roster in the sense that like at least a person on the bench can't have him on the taxi squad. He's done nothing but rake Tyler Wade, who plays hard and he seems like a nice enough guy. I'm going to call him El Paso Tyler though. I don't want to see, I don't want to see Tyler Wade on the squad. He reminds me too often of, you know, a Matt, BD sort of cat, right? Guy that never really put it together. I know BD was all right in LA, but a guy that kind of comes back, comes to San Diego, has a hot spring. We give him 100 ABs. He bats 200 with a 601 OPS, and we let him go in May, right? So instead of doing that, we have Eggy and we have Grand Polly. And those two dudes rotate playing third until Manny's back. Because Eggy Rosario, we texted each other yesterday. That dude hits the shit out of the ball. The Dominican Swiss yeah. Army knife. He rakes. He rakes. He's he's stocky. He looks like a right. He's kind of like a. I think you mentioned this on the show, but on the show before, he does have J Ram vibes a little bit. He does yeah. kind of have a J Ram vibe. And Graham Pauly, someone I think it was Nikki B on Twitter, Nikki PB, and incredible nickname. I want to give her all the credit for this. DJ Polly G for Graham Pauly. <laughs> That's pretty good. DJ Polly G, bro. Also, I don't think the, the not good. played a game in the bigs. I'm so over. I'm so no disrespect, Luke. Guys, they're gonna have to play a game in the bigs sooner than later, right? I, I Tyler Wade has played games in the bigs, and I know what he plays like. <laughs> you know, let yeah. Grand Polly come up. Grand Polly, all he has done every time I've watched this dude play this spring, hit, 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 great A B, hit. I'm like, holy shit. What does this guy have to do? And the thing I dude, the thing I know about Mike Schilt is I feel like he's one of these guys that's like, hey, if you're hidden, you're in the lineup. I don't think he plays those games. I think he's like, yo, I agree. He wants the best team in. Yeah, I mean, Tyler Wade's good defensively. I got nothing against Tyler Wade. He plays hard. Hey, Tyler too. Wade, Tyler Wade got a free trip out to South Korea, and we gotta commend him for that. But there is no reason that he should be playing in the bigs for the Padres over Graham Pauly. It doesn't make any sense. Graham Pauly, all he's done is hit. Tyler Wade, he's not he's not a hitter. He's a defensive guy. We don't need we already have a lot of good defensive guys. We have the yeah, platinum glove winner in right field. Our defense we have is the great. best defensive infield in the in baseball. Like we don't need more defensive guys. Um, I don't know, Matt. I think I think it's about time we jump into our Manta sleep. Yes. Um, Matt, you got your mask. I do have my everyone mask. in the chat. If if you're a if you're a loyal listener to to the Hogwatch as well as you know, Divine Deck. Mantis Sleep is the best sleep mask in the game. Me and Matt wear it every single time. 
um, that we're taking a nap, going to sleep, really anytime. You're, you're going to see how aesthetically pleasing this is too. Um, he can't I look even like a bug. No, I look fresh as hell, baby. Yeah. So really, it's just a comfortable mask. Um, the link is in the bio for uh, for Manta, but you know they want to change the way that we look at naps. Uh, they think naps are better than coffee. Tomorrow, I'd say if you're going to take a nap, throw that Manta sleep on from you know maybe 10 to 1.30. Wake up for the DSG live show on the Divine Sports Gospel on YouTube. Um, take that Manta mask off. And then around 5 a.m. when the sun starts coming out again, throw that Manta mask back on to get some shut eye. Um, he looks too good right now, by the way. This is this is exactly what you get with the Manta sleep mask. It's in the description. So make sure you check out Manta fantastic sleep mask um we wear it all the time it's it's sleepy bob approved too uh bob melvin, had, bob. bob melvin did text me uh and he was like dude i can't believe you guys have that mask too i've been wearing it ever since 2023 so yeah if you want to lead a um you know if you want to lead a bad baseball team this is your mask but uh yeah guys check out the link below mike i gotta talk to you about this one guy real quick and i want to see what the chat has to say Cronenworth, Jake Cronenworth. I see people are starting to get back on the kind of crone hate wagon, right? And crone's not really been great the last two weeks offensively, fantastic defensively. I think, I think the pods fan base, man, we got to start rallying behind crone. There's way too much bad vibes around crone right now. I know he might have gotten a little overpaid if you if, if you look at the contract, right? Might have, might have. You know, shot our load a little too quick, giving him that money. But Jay Cronenworth cares. One. Two, that dude posts. He's there every single game. He's been a staple. He's been part of this core. Jay Cronenworth is going to give 110%. Yeah, he's had a little bit of a slump. Last couple of years hasn't been great. And I know people are saying every year he's gotten worse. But, hey, as a, you know, hey, as a fan base... When a player's struggling, you got to rally behind, dude. I don't like this negative shit. Crone isn't one of these guys. There's Mike Clevenger, when he was throwing meatballs and all the off-the-field shit, that's a guy I could be like, F that dude a little bit, right? Like, that guy was bad vibes. Crone, he tries, man. I don't know if we should give him the Trey Turner Phillies, but, like, we need to give Crone. What we really need Crone to do is we need Crone to hit a fucking nuke tomorrow, bro. We need Crone to get that confidence up. Because if Crone gets that confidence up, he's special. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. MTDB. I agree, man. No, guys. Hating hating on players on your own team does nothing. Nothing good, man. Commenting, you suck. Oh, Cronenworth blows. All this shit. On Twitter, that does nothing but bad vibes, bro. These guys are real people. They check that shit. Trust me. They 100% are, are listening are watching, are tweeting. They they know what's up. So be positive, man. Jake Cronenworth deserves better. This guy gives a shit, man. I think he's going to have a good year too, honestly. I know maybe he's not the guy that we want batting third, but if Cron can give me a 260 with 20 home runs, show up every day and play gold glove defense, I'm happy. I'm happy, bro. What about you, I, I I completely agree. I mean, I think... <sighs> My confidence in him going into the season is pretty low, to be completely honest. I, I don't think he's done a lot to really garner the excitement that he maybe had going into 2022. Um, but that doesn't mean that he's not a good baseball player. Great defensively. If he can just wake the bat up a little bit, man, hit like 740, 750 OPS, he's a really good player. He's great defensively, but he had a 689 OPS last year as our first baseman that played day in, day out. That's not acceptable. Can't happen. That can't happen. Not acceptable. So the crone resurgence would be fantastic. Maybe it's something mental that he was dealing with last year, not playing well. Because he we we know he's capable of playing well. But that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, did the league just figure him out? But his dude, I won't lie, man. I saw his face after one of the strikeouts he had yesterday against uh, the Kiwum, or not the Kiwum, LG Twins. And I saw his face, man, and he did not look like a happy camper, bro. And, and it, it sucks, dude, because I love Crow. That dude coming up, man, being in that Hunter Renfro deal as like, oh, who's this random guy? Oh, he pitches too? 
We need Crone. Hey, we're going to go on record right now, man. Hey, DSG is all in on the Crone zone this year, baby. We're going to be hyping that motherfucker up heavy. And I, I suggest other people doing it too. Because you could, trust me, you could bitch and moan all you want about players. This guy sucks. Oh, this guy blows. Doesn't do shit. Thing about SD, the thing about at least Divine Deck, it's positive vibes only, baby. VAR. If you have VAR as fans, that shit trickles down into the players. Also want to give Dara, one of our favorite fans, a shout out. Encouraging players worked in Philly. Yes, it did. Yes, it did, Dara. Guys, this look at the NL West, man. This is going to be a fucking gauntlet of a year. We're going to need every single one of our players to ball out. Every single one. Crone. Xander. We need all these dudes to ball out. And the only way they do that, man, is if they're happy, they're healthy. So as fans, the role of the fan, in my opinion, and everybody can be fans differently. I know some people like hating. I know some people like creating burner accounts and sending DMs when someone strikes out, which I think is a humongous loser move. But you know, hey, everybody's their self. Hey, be yourself. But as a fan of a team, I want every single one of those players to do well. So I'm going to root my ass off for Crone. I'm going to root my ass off for Xander, Matt Waldron, Pedro, all these dudes. And it starts tomorrow, baby. It does. It does. What's your predictions for the game tomorrow, Matt? What are we thinking? Yeah, man. So what I was going to do right now, I'm going to pull up the starting lineups for both teams, and we're going to kind of go over each one. Um, my prediction, though, Mike, I think tomorrow is going to be close. I'm thinking 4-2, 4-3. And I, I'll be honest. I think the pods are going to pull off the win. And yeah. I'm not just saying that. I think everybody – hey, guys, guess what? Just a heads up. The ESPN broadcast is going to be like a, you know, Lisa Ann video from 2009, bro. A <laughs> lot of glazing. A lot of glazing. A lot of glazing. A lot of glazing. Krispy Kreme, you know, a lot of glazing. So don't be, glazing. don't be surprised when all they talk about is Otani. All they talk about is all this other stuff. That means yeah. nothing. Remember Eduardo... Eduardo Perez. Eduardo got, Perez is going to have Eduardo a Perez is gonna look game. At, Eduardo Perez is going to look at uh, Fernando Tatis Jr. after Fernando hits a home run. And he says, that's what a superstar looks like, Nando. You remember when he said that shit? Fuck Eduardo yeah. Perez. And then, hey, and, then he, and then during spring, pr spring training when he was inter interviewing Tatis, he's like trying to be all friendly. Like he didn't say that shit last season. Like, fuck you, buddy. You were an absolute fucking scrub in the MLB. A scrub. You were horrible. Trying to talk down on a future Hall of Famer and Fernando Tatis Jr. Yes, I said it. I don't care. Just like this is, but listen, Matt, this is something, a great story for the chat, actually. Um, me and Matt, when we were watching in 2020, uh, the playoffs against the Cardinals, we were listening to an absolute blow fest on the Cardinals um, <laughs> from the broadcast, like an absolute book hockey session. And <laughs> we. <laughs> We were like, we were like, hey, we got to turn this broadcast off and play some music to switch it up. We shut the sound off. We threw on a little bit of a, I believe it was a, uh, what was that? Yeah, it was, like a, it was like, it was like not a Rufus to Soul, but it was like one of those vibes. We threw on a mix. We threw on a mix, and instantly we started hitting. Tatis hit two homers. Um, and after that point, I've been off on ESPN broadcast. It, it's just I'm listening to Don and Mud tomorrow. People. I'm listening to Don and Mun tomorrow without a doubt. Are, I'm pretty sure are they also are they also broadcasting if it's I'm national? I'm pretty sure they're broadcasting tomorrow, dude. Wow. Well, yeah, it's gonna be are, Don and Mun on MLB TV. Uh, it said is oh, it? It said is, is it? it. <laughs> I you know I hope so. You know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know. I hope so. I don't I don't think I don't think that they're gonna allow people to watch not on ESPN to be completely honest. I think uh listen, if you're if you're gonna fly out if you're gonna fly out those people like Eduardo Perez, Carl Ravitch, whoever's doing the broadcast, you're gonna you're a hundred percent not allowing MLB TV to stream uh, the local broadcasts. I would I pray to God that they do though. You know what they should do, man? They should take uh, they should you know come out with something that brings someone back from the dead and get Joe Morgan and then fly out John Miller, bro. Those were that was when Sunday Night Baseball was electric. It's been it's been downhill since then, bro. Yeah. Bro. Uh, shout out Jay. Member for 17 months. That's impressive, Jay. That's a real one. LFG boys, Pods Baseball's back. Jay, this is the energy I'm talking about, bro. 
great four locos and pizza rolls? Come on, bro. Jay's having a Tuesday night in a Wednesday morning. Hell yeah, Jay. That's what I'm talking about, baby. But guys, we're looking at the lineup right now. Mike, what do you think our lineup is tomorrow? I'm going to tell you what I think the lineup is tomorrow, and I want to see if you agree. Um, uh, you guys- I, sorry, I was going to go. San Diego, the lineup, I mean, it's it's exactly what that shows there. Minus, right take, out, take out Tyler Wade. Um, facing think- hey, facing, I- uh, facing uh, Tyler Glass now, righty. I think they go Graham Polly. I don't even know if he's on the roster, though. I'm seeing people say that he's on the taxi squad. Is there a full roster announced yet? I don't know. Matt, I'll say this. I think it should be Graham Pauly, and if it's not Graham Pauly, it should be Eggy Rosario. Yeah. Eguai. 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 He's not uh, there's just- no fucking reason that Tyler Wade should be starting against the Los Angeles Dodgers for the San Diego Padres in the year 2024. He has done nothing in his yeah. MLB career to Three warrant. Times. He, has he done did, nothing he did hook up with. He did hook up with uh, Alex Earl. He's dude. He's he's not even in it to win a championship. He's in it for the the ladies. We know this. You said this. I was Matt. Did you not say that you were at? Right, I'll tell. Training? I'll tell. I'll tell a Tyler Wade story real quick, and then we're gonna go into why he shouldn't be playing. But when I went to spring training two weeks ago, uh, we went up to go buy tickets and there was about six kind of Instagram model looking girls, you know, probably my age. And they were waiting and they're like, oh, no, he put our name down. And I'm like, I start eavesdropping. I'm like, oh, I wonder what player, you know, put their name down. And they're like, yeah, there should be six tickets for under Tyler Wade's family. And it's like six of like, honestly, very attractive girls. So off the field, he's probably my favorite player. The kid's an well, absolute dog. You know, he just, he just can't hit. He can't hit. Dude, he's, he's probably, he's, he, he can hit, just not the baseball. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> he seems like he's in good shape uh, off the field. On the field. I'm not I'm not mad at him being a bench piece to start the season. I just don't think that he should be somebody that's starting in a game like this. Yeah. Obviously, it's the open like if it's it's like if you look at the opening day lineup three years down the road, he's gonna be the guy that you're like, we had fucking Tyler Wade playing third base. Like that's like the issue I see with him playing third that's base to point. start the season. Like we don't like if Graham Pauly becomes a guy or Rosario becomes a guy and you look at that, you're like, Oh, this was the first time he played. There's no future for Tyler Wade on the San Diego. It's like line. when you see Nelson Cruz back at you're like Nelson Cruz and Matt Carpenter were on our team, bro. That yeah, was a exactly. crazy, that was, guys. That was a crazy moment. Okay. Let's look back. Let, I think I agree. I think the only difference in this lineup will be, um, I think that Eggy Rosario will probably get the start over Graham Pauly. I could see them switching. Um, you know, I can see Graham kind of coming in to maybe pinch hit or pinch run. Um, but I want to talk a little bit, Mike, about 2023's expectations compared to 2024's expectations. I I feel like everybody was hyping us up in 2023, right? Oh, the Padres are so good. They have all these new players, all this crazy stuff. When you really look at that 2023 lineup and team, like... Obviously, Soto's fantastic. He's a top 10 player in baseball. I saw someone say top three. I'm like, get out of here. He's not a top three player in baseball. He's a great player, though. When you look at the 2023 roster and then you look at the 2024 roster, is it insane for me to say I'm more confident in the 2024 roster strictly off a depth, like strictly off depth so that we don't have, you know, look at DH right now. We have a rotating thing of, you know, Manny Machado could play DH. You have five guys that could rotate that play in the lineup, but then you also have guys on the bench. You could have Graham Pauly DH. You could have Eggy Rosario DH. Yeah. You don't have 40-year-old Matt Carpenter and 41-year-old Nelson Cruz as your only DH options. Then you look at catcher. I'm very confident in Luis Camposano, and all I've seen from Kyle Higashioka is he's a very good defensive catcher, and I could see, I've watched Yankees games before, he can run into one. I could see Kyle Higashioka. He seems like a guy that hits a home run in this series for some reason, bro. Like, I see him just randomly, you know, second A-B, second A-B in the second game. If he doesn't, if Campy doesn't play both, he just goes deep off of uh, Yama Meatballs. But yeah. I don't think, I mean, look at our rotation. Matt, the pitching is better this year. The pi- 100%. It, it, I, I was just going to say, Matt, Matt, I'm looking at the 2023 opening day roster, right? Opening day lineup. And you can pull this up too if you want, so that we can kind of get get in uh, get in order. Rockies, Padres, um, March thirtieth, twenty twenty three lineup. If you pull that up, but yeah, um, 
Listen to this and tell me that we're not way better than we were last year. Leading off, Trent Grisham. Juan Soto hitting second, obviously stud. Machado hitting third, obviously stud. Bogart stud. Cronenworth hitting fifth. Matt Carpenter hitting sixth. Austin Nola hitting seventh. Hassan Kim hitting eighth. And David Dahl hitting ninth. Our team is way better this year than it was last year. You cannot convince me that that's not true. David Dahl is our right fielder. Austin Nola is our starting catcher. Matt Carpenter is our DH. That Trent Grisham's our leadoff hitter. Guy couldn't fucking hit water if he fell out of a boat last year. We are in a way better spot this year than we were last year. Dahl was Dahl was a good story, but David Dahl was not a player that was going to move the needle for the Padres. That, like, that home run honest. to tie it. That home run to tie it against the Rockies in the third game, and then hit, Kimmy hitting that walk off was pretty electric, though. Um, yeah, man, Mike, the depth is here this year. Guys, the NL, like we said, the NL West is going to be a gauntlet. There's no doubt about that. But look at our rotation too, man. Let's say, God forbid, everybody stays healthy this year. I don't think there's that many rotations better than the Padres rotation. And then you look at our lineup. I think we have a top, you know, 12 lineup in baseball. Our defense is fantastic as well. So you put all those together. Yeah, Jerry, so they have us at 14 in power rankings. I think this is a top 10 team. I think we're probably closer to 10 than one, obviously. But guys, if, if we know anything, by the way, it's that power rankings from the media don't mean shit, man. We 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 got to just win baseball games. And I think this team has so much potential to win baseball games. Um, Yeah, we, we lost, lost a lot, lot of extra inning game. games. We also lost a lot of games because like fools like, you know, Josh Hader didn't want to pitch because he wants that next contract. Snell was great, but he was also on a one contract. He. We had a lot of guys walking after the year. Kimmy's the only real, you know, guy that is going to leave after this year. If he doesn't get extended. That's a different vibe. When everybody knows, hey, this is going to be, you know, my work buddy for a while. That changes the vibe a little bit, bro. Last year, Soto, everybody knew Soto was going to go. Either he didn't want to. I'm not saying he didn't want to be here, but everybody knows Soto wasn't like, ah. Like, this is my team. I'm going to win a championship here. Like, that's all I want to do. He's like, no, I want to get that next contract, which is fine. Bob Melvin was looking across the bench thinking, one day I could be a San Francisco Giants manager. One day. Guys, the vibe. Fucking Bob. Dude, that's why, also, that's why I don't like Bob compared to Blake. Blake signed, got that fat deal. Good for Blake, bro. Hey, get that bag. My issue with Bob was that he goes on record and says, I was mid-season when we were competing for a playoff spot looking across the bench thinking maybe one day i could be the manager of the giants no motherfucker you're the manager of the padres we were better than the giants <laughs> like you got a better gig <laughs> you had a better gig uh yeah i don't know man that guy's frustrating um it's 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 funny man i i just hate i the, with every day that passes the more i have disdain for benedict melvin uh, Zilla against Cease home opener. I believe that they've already announced that. Uh, is it you starting the home opener? I think it's Joe, but I'm not sure. Joe yet. starting the home that opener. That was also announced before Cease was. Um... They they announced Cease was going to start the back end of the series versus the Giants. I believe so. It's either you or Joe starting the the home opener. I'd be I'd be very surprised if Blake Snell is ready to go by the beginning of opening day. That's ten days until the start of the season and he's jumping right into the baseball year it, unless he's been you know preparing like he's been ready to start the home opener the whole time which whatever team he starts or goes to then maybe but he's a notoriously slow starter yeah each season i would be very surprised if he's ready to go um but hey if he is expect eight innings 10 k's <laughs> Um, and then hope to God that we hit a ball off Camilo Duvall at the end of the game to win because you know damn well Blake Snell is going to shut us down every single time because it's the former Padre curse where they just decide to destroy us every time we play him. All right, um, guys, real quick, we're going to do some preseason predictions or or, or season predictions because we're you know one day away. I want to see people in the chat as well. But I'm going to ask my brother about five questions to kind of end the show about who do you, he thinks the Padres' best and worst players are going to be at certain positions. 
and we're going to call it an app and get ready for tomorrow because everybody needs their sleep. We need a lot of sleep in these next 30 hours because we got to be all locked in at 3 o'clock. Mike Devine, who will be the San Diego Padres' best starting pitcher during the 2024 season? My answer is Michael King will be the best starting pitcher for the San Diego Padres. Dude's electric, good personality, positive energy, hungry, excited that he gets the opportunity to start for us. He was a reliever in New York, and then they finally moved him into the rotation. Um, yeah, man, I just think he's going to be a just dominate for us. And um, in my opinion, he's going to be the best pitcher that we have this year. Matt. I'll bounce that question right back to you. You let me know who you think. Yeah, man. You know, I would have said Michael King before, you know, Thursday. But Dylan Cease with Ruben Niebla, you know, it gets me tingly, bro. I I, I was watching Ru- uh, I was watching Dylan Cease yesterday. This dude sits 97. Yeah. I, I thought I watched a decent amount of, um, you know, White Sox games. I watched a lot of random baseball games, especially because we're in California. A lot of the games start at four. I come back from the gym. I can watch that stuff. Dylan Cease, man, 96, 97, 98 with a nasty curveball, nasty slider. This dude is filthy. Yeah, he's going to have a couple, you know, give up a couple home runs. It's what everybody does. But I think with Ruben in San Diego, warm weather, great ballpark, great defense, I think he's going to do some incredible things. Incredible. I can't wait. All right. And I see a lot of people in the chat agree with King, Cease and Joe, Darvish. Guys, you know what I love to see? Those are a lot of different answers. Some parody. Some parody. Hey, that's good rather than just one guy. That's mm-hmm. huge. Um, all right, Mike. Who is going to be the best reliever for the San Diego Padres in 2024? This is a tough one, um, in my opinion. But I, I think we gave him, we paid him. To come and do something for us. 21, can you do something for me? Yuki Matsui is going to be the best reliever for the San Diego Padres this season. It was a toss-up in my opinion. I think, you know, I love Bobby Shakes, um, Bobby Suarez, Bobby Fastballs, whatever you like to call him. But I'm going with Yuki. I'm going with Yuki this year. I like it. A lot of people love Chef Yuki in the chat. See a lot of Tom Cosgrove as well. I think Tom Cosgrove is going to be nasty. But you know who I think is going to be pretty freaking good? And I'm not even sure uh, if he's going to start the season. I don't know if he's going to start. you're talking the- about. Are you sure? Guy. No, I'm saying I know you're talking about. Are you talking about Chella Jerry? Chella Jerry, baby. <laughs> Chella Jerry. Jeremiah Estrada, man. Jeremiah Estrada is going to be the guy – that no one remembers when we somehow got him because the Cubs DFA'd him. But he's going to be the dude that halfway through the season, we're going to be like, we need Chella Jerry to be our eighth inning guy. Dude, he throws fucking gas. Gas. He hasn't been touched the entire spring training, bro. And he seems like a good dude. He seems active. He seems a part of the team. You know, Steven Wilson leaving. What was Steven Wilson's role? He was like that sixth, seventh inning guy. Right, comes in, can get you a couple outs. Jeremiah Estrada fits right into that role and he throws faster and he has nastier stuff. He's throwing these. When if Jeremiah Estrada comes into the game tomorrow, I'm excited. I'm like, he's going to get a guy out. I love relievers that get motherfuckers scared to hit. You know, there's a lot of relievers that go, go in there that, you know, oh, he throws a lot of strikes or always oh, there. Tom Cosgrove, uncomfortable at, at bat. Jeremiah Estrada, uncomfortable at bat. Chella Jerry, baby. Heat, like for, what is it? Heat from the Valley. What do we call it? Um, <laughs> gas from the Valley. Um, awesome. A lot of, lot of people, hey, sleep on him. I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, if, if Chella Jerry can get ahead and count, he's going to be very good. Um, all right, team. Who is going to be the San Diego Padres offensive MVP in 2024? I think it's a pretty obvious answer. I'll let you go first. I mean, if it's not this guy, I will be dumbfounded. And my only goal that if it's not him is that it's because somebody else was an MVP. Uh, Fernando Tatis. I mean, come on. He's the best player on the team. Um, He's hungry. 
He's trying to reinsert himself. He's starting to get some advertisement deals again. Yes, sir. His swagger's back. He's yes, got those sir. sick-ass shoes. His swagger's yes, back. Sir. The aura is coming back. If he do, if he doesn't, I would be very, 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 very surprised. We're in trouble if he's not. We're in, we're in trouble <laughs> if he's not. We're in trouble if he's not. I think it's I think it's FTJ, baby. He looks great, man. He's hitting the shit out of the ball. He looks comfortable. And you know what the thing with Fernando, as someone who's been a fan of his for now, it feels like I've known the guy my entire life. When he's happy, he plays so much better. And he seems extremely happy. He's got pro far back. You know, his mom's in South Korea right now. It seems like the vibes around Fernando are the best it's been in a really long time. He went through some shit. A lot of it was self-induced, but he made it out. And guess what? When you make it out the fire, you appreciate it a lot more. Toddy, whole world's ahead of him right now. 2024, 25 years old, entering his prime, hitting the shit out of the ball. He's got to stay, yeah, stay, stay away from the faraway sliders. I, yeah, I agree with that. But hey, hey stay away, stay a, away from sliders. It's gonna be El Nino's stay year, from, baby. Stay away from sliders and stay healthy, baby. It's Tatis's resurgence. It's Tatis's it. resurgence. And then Matt, my, rookie, r- rookie of the. I'll ask you this one. Who's the best rookie this season for the Padres? It's it's it's. It, I mean, there's I, only a few. That's what I'm saying. You got to you got to choose. You got to yeah, choose. I mean, the amount of Jackson Merrill stock I have right now, it's. I think it's gonna be like Bitcoin, baby. It just keeps going up. You're like, dude, how how does this stock keep going up? I don't even get it. Jackson Merrill, he's a pro baseball player. That's all. That's all I see when I see him play. He's confident at the plate. He isn't overconfident. He doesn't look overmatched at all. Plays a solid enough center field where no one's even bringing it up. That's when you know he's solid. No one's even brought up. I forget he plays center field. Either the ball hasn't been hit there that much, or he's playing good enough where I'm like, all right, he hasn't made any bad plays. I think Jackson Merrill's going to have an awesome rookie year. I'm thinking 250, 260, 15 to 16 home runs, solid defense. And he plays 140 games. And he is. I'll give you. Himself. I'll give you my predictions for his his season. But I also I have a different rookie of the year for the Padres. But I do okay. think Jackson Merrill hits about 290 to 300, with the lower OPS though, around maybe 750. He's hitting a lot of singles, a lot of maybe you know a handful of doubles. I don't know if the power is going to be there enough right now to put him in that 20 home run range, where his OPS will be a little bit higher, but. I, he's a pure hitter, man. I could see him being a high average guy. My rookie of the year is, is the same one I said is going to be the reliever of the year for the Padres. I think Yuki Matsui is going to be a finalist for MLB reliever of the year this season. I will put that on record right now. He has struck out so many guys that he's faced in the limited amount of appearances that he's had. If he plays a significant amount of games and stays healthy, I know that he had a little bit of an injury. If he stays healthy, the way that he's been pitching against guys, I would not be surprised if he is our best reliever, our rookie of the year, and up there in the MLB for reliever of the year this year. That's that's my hot take. I think he's going to be established as our closer by the middle of April. I think it's going to be Suarez set wow. up if he is the closer. Middle of April is crazy. I thought you were going to say like June. Middle of April. Wow. If he if he comes out of the gates and pitches four four to five games and just dominates, why not? He he was a he he got signed as a closer, did he not? He was a closer in Japan, if You're I'm not facts. if I'm not mistaken. You're spitting facts. He knows like, how to do it. I'm gonna say my next one, sleeper of the year. Who's a player that we're not talking about right now that you think is gonna end up at the end of the season? We're gonna look back like, man, we did not expect that guy to have a year like that. I would say for comparison, 2023 Ha-Sung Kim type season yeah. where establishes himself as like a face of the team and just an incredible player. Who do you think is going to be that guy? You know, I think it's a, uh, this is, it's kind of crazy to say that this guy's a sleeper, but I think it's Xander Bogarts. I, I think, I think this year is where we're like, oh, this is who Xander is. Like, this is the guy. We saw glimpses of it last year. Beginning of the season, he was healthy. Right, he was dominating. Yeah, got hit great. on the wrist, fell off, really, really steep fall off. Comes back around at the end of the season, feeling better, hitting crazy. This year, I think if Xander stays healthy, God willing, he is going to prove why he was paid as much money, 
a fan favorite in Boston, why he had that hot start and hot finish at the end of last season. He's being slept on by our fan base. Maybe yeah. not the pu- maybe say, not the public say, as much. I think I we're say, the ones that sleep on him the most. Not us intentionally, not us two. I but the San Diego agree. Padres fan base I sleep on, on Xander Bogart. Bogart. I, I low-key forget we have Xander Bogart sometimes. And I, I don't want to ever do that again. And I want Xander to make sure he shows us why, you know, he got that contract. Because, you know, was it a pretty crazy contract? Absolutely. But there's a reason why he got it. And, you know, there's a reason why other teams were willing to pay him around that money. Oh, is that? Uh, I, don't I don't know. know if that, Jonah's, Jonah's uh, trolling Jonah, us. If, Jonah's got to be trolling. If, Jonah, if Jonah's correct, that's uh, that that was good. I, I literally saw it. I was like, no way. Um, Last but not least, Mike. Uh, or, well, I'll tell you mine, and then I got the biggest question of it all. I have two people that I think are going to be the sleepers of the season. One pitcher, one hitter. My pitcher, Johnny Brito. Cali B. I love Johnny Brito. I think he's going to end up being our fifth starter. I think he's going to throw 150 to 160 innings. I think he's going to be a fan favorite. I think he's going to be the guy that, you know, we didn't have last year. We 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 had the reason why we had to pick up a Rich Hill. He's the guy that comes in, you know, hey, the reason why we couldn't win more than four games in a row is because we didn't have that next pitcher. Johnny Brito's the guy that's going to come in. Cali B, baby, throwing that si- that spicy sauce, bro. I think Johnny B's going to be special. And a lot of people in the chat were saying it, but I believe it. 2024 is the year of Campy, baby. We've been talking about it for three months. Campy, this is your season. You got Ethan Salas obviously waiting in the wings, but Campy has the entire it's 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 his position. He's the catcher of the San Diego Padres. He has only shown when healthy that he can rake and he plays a great catcher. He he has a cannon. He's throwing people out. I think Campy's gonna have a fantastic season. I think he'll end the season as a consensus top 10 catcher in baseball. I don't think I see Francisco Alvarez getting named as a top 10 catcher in baseball. I see Gabriel Moreno. I think Campy is just as good, if not better, than both those guys. And all he needs is a shot to show that. And this year, he's going to get that shot. So I'm excited, man. Last but not least, VAR. The biggest question of it all. Who will end the season with the most VAR? Vibes above replacement for everybody at home who does not know it. What does this sound like? Ha so cute. Of course it's HSK, baby. It's Ha Song. I mean, come on. He's the he's every his VAR has always been top on the team, in my opinion. Maybe behind Tatis 2021, 2022. Um, definitely not behind Tatis in 2022. I think it's Ha Song Kim, man. Um I don't expect that to change this year. He is the he's probably the biggest fan favorite I've seen a, of a player in sports in my mind since maybe like I don't even know who I don't even know who like Boban in the NBA maybe that's the only compare like I don't know he's actually like, good Kim's actually good that's the difference so like I don't know man I think he's got so much aura so much var I'm going Kimmy yeah man I love that take my one. You know, VAR is very interesting, right? The guy with the most VAR right now, I'd say, is Profar. But I'm thinking of a guy that's going to kind of come up and become like the VAR guy. Like a guy that, you know, has that has that sauce to him. And I think it's Graham Pauly, bro. Interesting. You know why I think it's Graham Pauly? I think he's just this, like, you know, quiet guy, eighth-round draft pick, kind of comes out of nowhere. And you look, and you're like, Oh, like I, not much to expect. He went to Duke. He's like, I wanted to be a financial a- analyst. You're like, oh, on paper, he seems like a nerd, right? You're like, oh, this guy kind of lame. But when you watch him play, there's something there. And he rakes. And when you rake, your VAR goes up. Because hitting is the coolest thing you could possibly do. People are saying no Polly. I'm telling you guys, polly has got VAR, bro. polly has got VAR. You know why he has VAR? I haven't even heard that motherfucker talk. When he does, he's a, he's like Kane in the night in the late nineties, bro. <laughs> you're like when you don't talk, you're like there's there's this mysterious aspect about him. All he does is hit. He doesn't even talk. I think it would be funny if he just doesn't talk all season. I like Graham Pauly. 
I also think Jackson Merrill has insane bar. And uh, I think he's just going to be, I think he's going to be legit. It's a great nickname, by the way. Pro VAR. I love that. Um, I will be taking that. It's Epic 882. We will be giving you credit as well. Thank you so much. I mean, Matt, tomorrow, everyone in this chat, one more time, I'm going to throw it in here. Divine Sports Gospel on YouTube. We're going to be up early, 2 a.m., streaming live. Cannot wait. Opening day. I think we just got to, we all got to get hyped up, man. Go give us a follow on YouTube if you're trying to join the live stream tomorrow. Um, We'll be up there chatting it up, slamming some coffee with all of you guys getting ready for the opener. Cannot wait. Uh, As always, Matt, great show. Um, Everyone in the chat, thanks for being here tonight. Tomorrow we ride. Hey, thank you guys. Y'all rock. Uh, Go Padres, baby. Hey, last sleep, last sleep of 2024 before baseball. We got baseball all year. We're going to have baseball still till, sleeping. Hey, we got baseball till, you know, when, when's the parade in San Diego going to be? November, I think it's probably like, going to be like November 10th. November 10th? November 10th, 2024 in the gas lamp. So guess what? It's a long time. Lock in, baby. Go pods. Peace.